Well, hello to a totally unprepared video that I've been thinking about making for a while on philosophical problems. And this will be the first one. And it's the eye. So we've learned at school that the eye is an organ that we use for seeing. And if you don't have eyes, you can't see. And if you have eyes, you can see. And we learned that the eye receives light through a lens and the light falls on these cells in the retina and they stimulate nerves which stimulate the brain and we can see and if there's any problems with that system then we can't see. So now the problem. If the light is falling on the retina then where is what we're seeing? So think about that. In the image we have the things we're seeing are outside us, they're beyond the eye. And the light hits them, bounces off and goes into the eye and settles on the retina where it stimulates nerves. Now if we put something between us and the outside world to block the light, we can't see. So the light is forming an image inside our eye. So where is what we're seeing? Is it inside our eye where the image is forming? Or is it outside our eye where the light starts? Well maybe it's in the brain. Because if you damage the nerves from the eye to the brain then you can't see either. So if at any part in that path from the outside object through the eye into the brain if anything there goes wrong we can't see. So when we ask where is the object, it's, it could be anywhere. Now normally when we see things through our eyes without thinking in terms of science, things are over there. Heidegger would say Dasein, over there. They are beyond us in the outside world. But then going back and thinking about it from what we know in terms of light and neurons and excitation and stuff, they're nowhere. So this is the conundrum, the philosophical question I wanted to raise in my first video that I haven't really thought about at all, which is where are things? And this is actually a very profound question because in early, actually not early at all, in late Buddhist writings, this very question is raised in the Shungama Sutra, where there's a dialogue between Buddha and I believe Ananda after he's been dragged out of a brothel and ticked off quite severely for confusing his senses. Um, there's a discussion on where is the mind. So I'm not talking about the mind, I'm just talking about objects in this post. Where are they? So we can go back and we can examine this again and again and again and I'll do it again. So it's common knowledge that as you look around you see the world outside you. And there's no issue with that, we're familiar with that. I'm here and the world is over there. No problem, we can look around and we can confirm that. And in actual fact we can do a bit of an examination, we can look left and right and see our nose and we get some sense that our eyes are involved. It's as though our eyes are windows in fact, isn't it? Our eyes are windows. And then which side are we? If the world is out there we must be behind the window looking out. So then you end up with all the old ideas. Descartes, the little homunculus sitting there behind our window looking out at the world as though we were the alien in, uh, in H.G. Wells's War of the Worlds looking out from behind our machine. But there's obviously the problem with that, Plato's third man fallacy, that if there's a homunculus sitting behind my eyes looking out then who's inside that homun homunculus looking out? How does that homunculus see? And you can kick the can down the road. You haven't solved the problem of how this seeing is going on. So then we turn to science and we start looking at how it all works. And then if we overlap what we know about science with what we're looking at here, then we have this problem, which I've already been going over a couple of times now, which I'll go over again. That what we're told is going on is that there are objects out there and then the light hits those objects and that light 
comes towards us, goes into our eye, interacts with the ret retinas, excites the neurons, and the neurons continue the excitation into the brain. Now, some people think that there's a little homunculus in the brain. Quite, quite a modern idea, and quite a, quite a well-respected idea, that somehow the brain is a little homunculus and it does the seeing. Hmm, really? Is that really any better than Descartes? That if we cut the, new, the nerves into the brain, then yeah, true, it looks like that's the window. And we have to think of windows a little bit less literally. It's not like looking through a glass window, but somehow the data that's coming down that optic nerve is somehow the window. And there's a little homunculus sitting in the brain, decoding all that data so that it knows what's outside the eye. We can't get outside into the world. If we could, we wouldn't need eyes. We need eyes to see. We can't step outside our eyes. We can't go up to something and somehow remove the veil of sensory experience and see it as it really is, the noumenon, as it's being called. We are in the phenomenal world. We see phenomena. And there's uh, another problem in there. Um, the decoding of data. So the brain has only ever sat behind this complex system of vision. It's never calibrated the system. It's never been outside itself. It's never been able to see, say, this chair. Oh, well, speaking of which, this chair is off the set of um, the Hammer House films. What a side issue. Um, so I've never seen this chair as it is. I only have the phenomenal experience. The same system of eyes and neurons and things that I've always had since I was born. That's the only way I've ever seen the world. It's never been calibrated. So how do I know how to decode this data? So th there's no absolute here. There's no instruction manual. These things have emerged, um, what you might say, normative, normatively. There is no baseline. We're in a phenomenal hermeneutic loop. That we take a system together and we live within that system and no one thing's better than another. They're all interconnected, some network. So maybe it's like that. But this always raised, raises this question. The thing we've always taken for granted, that things are over there. This chair is behind me. But actually, when I think about it, where is it? Am I seeing light? If I turn the lights off, I can't see the chair. So I'm seeing light. So I'm not seeing the chair, I'm seeing the light that's bouncing off the chair. And where do I see that light? It's no good at getting here. No good at getting here. It's got to get in here. So the chair's in here? Is that right? Chair's in here? Chair's out there? Maybe Gilbert Ryle would say, there's a category mistake here. That when I say chair, the one I'm sitting on, I use the word chair differently to how I may say I'm seeing a chair. That the seeing a chair is a phenomenal thing and the sitting on a chair, I don't have answers, I have questions. But actually, if you see it the way it is, that's the answer. So there's no textbook answer to this. There's no exam answer. If you see, the question asks you to see things more closely. That's what I want to do. Um, so have I questioned this issue enough as to where are things? It kind of depends how you look at it and it depends how you think about it. And it's not an easy question. So question number one, post number one, totally unprepared and hopefully to be edited. Um,